Hey guys, um, welcome to another webinar by Kazob. We are a career development venture and what we do is um, we broadcast live interviews of people from the industry, of faculty members, of educational institutions uh, and we broadcast it live so that students and professionals can learn about them. Um, today we have a really exciting webinar. So, uh, we are going to be talking about what the next revolution in, in fashion is. And uh, we have Donald Pottard, who is the chair on the Paris College of Art. And, um, um, and he's going to be talking about it. And he's going to be interviewed by Kamna Patel, who is uh, an alumni of PCA. And she's a photographer now. We've got a really diverse um, crowd today because we've got around 122 participants from over 12 countries. So uh, it should be a lot of fun, especially the polls. And we will have a Q&A session at the end, but don't wait for the end of the webinar to actually send in your questions. Uh, whenever you do come up with a question, just send it in and we'll make a note of it. So great. So let's start. Um, Kamna, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Ajay. Hi, I'm Kamna. I'm a photographer based in Mumbai. And I graduated from PCA in 2013. Today, Talking to Donald Pota, who is the ex CEO of Jean Paul Gaultier and the current chair of fashion at Paris College of Art. So, hi Donald, how are you doing? Fine, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career? All right. Well, I started my career not in fashion but in theater, and uh, very, very soon Jean Paul Gaultier came to me and asked me if I could help him with his fashion. So, uh, it convinced me to come and discover the world of, uh, of fashion, and we've been working together for about 25 years. Uh, after that, I uh, was president of uh, the uh, Federation of uh, Couture in France, and uh, as well, I uh, was CEO of several uh, companies like uh, Jean-Charles de Castel-Bajac or Ungaro uh, for the men. And then I decided to create something different with uh, designers, something that did not exist. Uh, I became an artistic agent for fashion designers. Because the world of fashion has changed so much already, and this is a little bit uh, what we are discussing today, the future of fashion. Um, just I'm chair of, as you say, I'm chair of the Paris College of Art for fashion. Um, before we get along with the conversation, I just want to remind our viewers that um, there should be polls running underneath the, the window. So please feel free to participate and share your thoughts and your answers with us. And yeah, feel free to send questions as well so we can keep this a little more interactive. Um, so you've had a really long and successful career and you've seen trends come and go. And what are your predictions for the next revolution in fashion? Well, you know, uh, fashion is always moving, and you have a revolution every 10 years, let's say. Today, it's, it's becoming a constant uh, revolution. The last revolution was about distribution, but today we're facing many new revolutions, not only one revolution, but three different revolutions. The first one uh, we'll discuss later is technology. Uh, the second one is presentation, and the third one is distribution. Uh, in technology, things are going to change uh, a lot. Like it changed in the uh, 19th century, for instance, with Jacquard. Jacquard was uh, a, an incredible new technology. It was almost the ancestor of uh, computers. It was the first time people used uh, uh, punch cards to, uh, to work, and these punch cards uh, that were used in computers until the, uh, the beginning of, uh, of uh, this century were invented 200 years before uh, for fashion. So uh, it's this kind of technology and changes that we're going to, to deal with. We'll go more in detail about that. Uh, for a uh, uh, presentation, you will see that this is going to change totally because uh, 
we the world is becoming so fast, uh, uh, and uh, the sales are going to be uh, directing and taking over, unfortunately, a little bit over creativity. Uh, and for distribution, well, this is going to change, of course, through the internet, but uh, as well by many, many other new forms. Okay. So, can you elaborate a little bit about the role of technology in the future of fashion? Absolutely. Well, uh, new technology is uh, something that is uh, taking over fashion as it always has been. For instance, I told you about the 19th century in Jakarta, but luxury is always very interested in new technology, and uh, usually they um, take uh, their know-how, uh, traditional know-how, and use it with the newest technology, would it be in printing, in uh, uh, making molds, um, everything that is new has to go through first luxury, then, of course, bigger and bigger and bigger markets. Um, so the luxury uh, departments and the financial groups are uh, very interested in the development of uh, digital um, and high-tech. For instance, uh, 3D printing. Uh, I'm sure you have seen already that some designers are using uh, 3D printings to make uh, clothes, uh, very special clothes. Some of them are already in museums. And um, it, it's a brand uh, new technique because 3D is changing as well all the time. You know, the 3D printers that we knew two or three years ago are totally obsolete and now we have uh, liquid uh, uh, printers, for instance. Uh, or printers that can print human skin, for instance. So with all these new techniques, we're going to be able to develop uh, absolutely amazing new techniques. For instance, you know that uh, today uh, we have, uh, uh, of course, uh, a lot of uh, 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 garments that are exactly the same because it is cheaper to produce uh, 1,000 times the same garment. Tomorrow is going to be totally different. To produce 1,000 different garments is going to cost exactly the same. So why should we stick to this uh, uh, fast fashion? While we can uh, invent a new fashion, a new uh, trend, while everybody can be dressed differently, and this is exactly what is going to be, to, to be in the next uh, decade. Um, for instance, you know that uh, um, haute couture is something absolutely amazing, but it's only for one person, and it's very, very costly. If well, It's very costly because it takes a lot of people to sew and to prepare, of course, uh, these uh, garments. Replace that with robots or with uh, 3D printers or all these new machines, and you're going to have something absolutely unique for a very reasonable price. So that's very important because um, uh, very soon uh, this uh, um, uh, you will see this uh, mass customization effect that will replace the fast fashion as we know it today. Okay. Wow. How would this mass customization trend affect the role of the designers in the future? That's a, that's a very interesting question because um, the role of the designer has already changed a lot during these uh, last uh, 50 years. Uh, before, the designers were just designing clothes, and that was it. And uh, they were asked to do more and more things. Uh, because today uh, the fashion houses uh, are more lifestyle. They open like, uh, themselves to lifestyle. For instance, uh, 20 years ago there were no glasses made by fashion houses, uh, very little perfume, no watches. Uh, uh, and today the designers have to be very, very curious. 
course, they still have to do uh, to do uh, fashion because it's for the image. But they have to work in very very uh, uh, new uh, areas, like I said, uh, glasses, accessories, uh, perfume, etc. And uh, something really new is becoming. It is the presentation. Um, things have really uh, changed during these last, uh, uh, let's say, 50 years. Uh, ready to wear was born, and ready to wear was created by couture houses. So when ready to wear was created, the people who invented ready to wear took the image of couture to make ready to wear as it is now and as we know it. For instance, they decided to make fashion shows. Ready to wear doesn't need fashion shows. Couture does, but ready to wear doesn't need fashion show. And ex exactly, it doesn't need a public fashion show. But at the very beginning, the fashion shows were only for specialists. It was not open to the public, not open to the journalists, the press. It was only for the buyers. Because you had six months before between the fashion show and uh, the time the uh, the clothes were in the uh, stores. And in six months, you can do a lot of things, like copy, for instance. So it was very dangerous to show six months ahead. But then the work changed, because um, Kenzo, who was the very first one, decided to change these fashion shows into events that were like uh, show business. Okay, so it was no more only for professionals. And then they invited the press, and they decided to put music and girls dancing. And it was really an amazing show and uh, really fun, and everybody loved it. So the horses realized that it, it was very good for their image. And uh, they stopped caring about the copies and all the problems that were created. But then there is a new problem that was created by that. It's that because they invited the press, and because they invited the bloggers, and because you have Instagram, and because it's so easy to put everything uh, on the web, at the second you see it, when you, a collection arrives in a store, people have seen the collection thousands of times, you know, and, and the people are disappointed when, when they go to the store and they say, uh, they are said, oh, this is a brand new collection. They have this impression to, that it's an old collection because it's been uh, viewed hundreds and hundreds of times on, by the bloggers, by the, uh, by the, uh, 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 all these apps in, on the internet. So, this is going to change because uh, this system is, is dead. Uh, now people speak a lot about the uh, see now, buy now system. And um, it's for the wrong reasons because some people say that it's uh, the commercial that takes over the creativity. I don't think so because if you uh, think of couture, for instance, it is see now, buy now. At the end of the fashion show, anybody can buy the uh, the clothes, and the creativity is still there. Uh, I think uh, uh, to survive uh, the uh, ready to wear, and uh, of course I'm speaking luxury, but not only luxury, international ready to wear, let's say, has to be shown exactly as it was in the 60s, which is only to uh, 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 a certain group of people who are the buyers to be professional again. Then, when the clothes arrive in the stores in September, for instance, uh, for the uh, for the winter, then you can make a big show, invite everybody. So the the role of the designer is to control this because now they have to be as well. The name has changed. You don't say a designer anymore. You say an artistic director. So uh, uh, you'll have more and more to be an artistic director. And uh, the fashion designer of tomorrow will have to know all of this. So that's very interesting. So what you're saying is that 
technology is moving forward, but presentation is still is, has to move backwards. Um, just before the next question, I'd like to remind our viewers to please answer the poll questions if you haven't already, and send in any other questions that you have, because we're going to make Donald answer all our questions at the end of this. Um, so what about distribution, though? Uh, what with these stores changing the game? Or, you know, can you tell us a little bit what you think, how you think distribution is going to change in the future? Absolutely. Distribution is going to be the third revelation. It's already started a little bit, not too much, but the distribution as it is now, for the reason I just told you uh, in the present uh, uh, subjects, um, is very costly. It's very costly today to open a, to open a, a store, for instance, and uh, to have a lot of stock in the store. So more and more, uh, the real uh, stores, when I say real stores, it's opposite to web stores, uh, have a mass of, of stock, you know, to, to, uh, 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 to deal with. And this is very, very costly. So more and more stores are going to be uh, soon uh, transforming to showrooms, where you will just go and uh, look at the clothes. Maybe you can uh, uh, try one or two clothes but there is not going to be any stock. When you will leave the store, it's going to be with empty hands and just a, a ticket, okay? And then your clothes will be delivered by two or three days afterwards. So when you go to these stores, what's going to happen? You will see some clothes and uh, you will have only uh, one size, okay? Not so many uh, sizes as today. And uh, you will have the size, you will have the color, you will have uh, everything that you can try on. But uh, nobody is going to uh, help you to go, uh, you know, uh, uh, back here to see if they have another color, another size. This time it is over. So, uh, uh, of course, if you don't have stock, it's going to be you're going to save a lot of money. You're going to save a lot of money because what you will do is that you will have a central stock per country, for instance, or per region, if the country is uh, very, very big. And uh, everything will leave from these uh, platforms, not from the stores anymore. More and more, these, this is going to change, and this is going to be uh, a real revolution. Okay. Wow. Um. I think the second poll should be up just about now. Uh, Kamla, I will put up the second poll in two minutes. It should be up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, how do you see this affecting the job market in the future? And what kind of skills will young designers need to acquire to compete, so to speak? Well, uh, you understand that with all these changes, the, uh, the work of the designers themselves is going to change. As it's been changing every uh, 10 years, uh, the designers shall have to be a little bit uh, an engineer. And they will have to know a little bit of engineering. They don't have to be engineers totally, like we will ask them to build a car. But, you know, they will have to be able to speak with people uh, who know these techniques, like uh, they speak today with people who know how to uh, work on computers, you know. Uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, it, it was very hard for the fashion designers uh, to, uh, to work on computers at the very beginning, you know. Computers were just for secretaries. <laughs> but now, of course, they understand that the uh, artistic uh, uh, interest of the computers is going to be the same with all the new technology. So they have to open their mind and uh, change their way of thinking toward technology, um, distribution, and presentation of the fashion shows. So this is going to be a, 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 lo a real change, and they'll have to get ready now as soon as possible. Great. So, 
thank you, Donald. I think it's time to take questions. And I believe that the results of the first poll should be out sometime now or are out already. Um, so let me see if anyone's asked us questions already. Um, so, Kamna, you want to look at the results of the first poll first? Yeah, yeah, sure. Adrat, okay. maybe you can, you can um, yeah. get the results of the first poll. Okay, so can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so most people think that sustainable production is the future of fashion, followed by 3D printing and then supply chain optimization and mass customization. Ooh. Donald, do you agree? Uh, I can't read, <laughs> but I understand you. Um, yeah. Well, People are voting for sustainable production as the future of fashion, followed by 3D printing and mass customization. A lot of companies already started, you know, uh, 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 sustainable fashion because fashion is, um, I'm afraid, to say one of the two main sources of pollutions on the planet uh, because of all the uh, chemical that are used, um, things. That will have to change very, very quickly. And uh, some of these uh, 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 houses already started, you know, to uh, communicate on the change of the fact that they are using natural products, for instance, for the, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, the colors of the clothes. But it's not enough, of course. It's not enough because you still have a lot of chemicals and it's going to be to take a long time a long time, you know, to change all the mentalities. Uh, because people say they want uh, natural clothes or they want uh, natural colors. But this has a cost. And uh, I do not know if people are ready to pay for this cost, you know. It's like uh, the uh, for food. Uh, people want natural food, they don't want chemicals. But when you say that uh, to have uh, uh, organic food, you have to pay twice as much. Yeah. What happens? They take the regular food. So little by little, uh, I guess this will uh, this will come, but it will take time, and people are not ready to pay more for the moment, uh, which explains the success of fast fashion. Fast okay. fashion is really destroying the planet. Okay. Um. Let's take your first question. Um, do you think that the mass customization by machines will reduce the number of artisans creating haute couture? Would it be more important to preserve these skills and craftsmanship? Um, I don't think so. You know, it's going to be like if you see cars, for instance, uh, you have a lot of robots building cars. And they are not building the uh, nice part of the car. They are really building the structure, everything which is in metal, everything that is not really interesting. But when it comes to uh, to uh, making the car uh, a luxury car, of course they use uh, people for that. Uh, so it's going to be the same for uh, these new products in fashion. They will do the. Uh, the robots will do the less interesting part, but there will still be a room, of course, for the uh, uh, for the uh, know-how. And here at Paris College of Art, for instance, we are creating a new master, uh, which is called uh, Haute Couture, Haute Technology, and we're just uh, uh, rightly going to uh, to teach the students to use both the uh, 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 the high technology and the know-how of uh, uh, couture, with couture and to combine them, you know. We want uh, this high technology to, to add something new and not to replace what we already have. We have another very interesting question. Keeping up with the latest trends of fashion is considered an elitist privilege. Do you see that changing in the future? Oh, sorry, can you repeat? Keeping up with the latest trends of fashion is considered an elitist privilege. Do you see that changing in the future? Hmm. 
Uh, mm, not really. <laughs> not really. This is one of the things that uh, there will always be uh, people with uh, with uh, 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 privilege who wants to have something special, you know. And it's a good thing because uh, uh, this is for these people that we create some labs. Uh, so it always starts with the R and D, and R and D is always made in, uh, in in couture or in luxury. Then, when it's been you know used for uh, for uh, couture, then you can use it for mass production, for instance. And this is exactly what happens uh, if you make I don't know a new shoulder. You can't make it for mass production because it's very costly. But you can do it with couture because the price is not a problem. So once it's been done for couture, then you can work it for mass production. I'll give you a short example. Uh, a, a French uh, a couture designer uh, wanted an impeccable um, shoulder. And he worked with a, an aircraft company here in France with Airbus. And together, they worked on a special uh, uh, product that was both strong and very light. And now, of course, uh, uh, it's been presented in future. And it can be, uh, it can be made now in a very, very cheap way for mass production. Mm -hmm. So finally, think of uh, luxury as a laboratory and not as something very special for very few people. This is how I see it. But maybe mass customization will change that. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think there will always be a, a strong demand for, uh, for uh, 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 products with a lot of know-how, fortunately, because this know-how must not disappear. It's very important that we keep uh, all this, uh, this uh, everywhere in the world. I think we have time for one more question and the results of the second poll. So the viewer wants to know that now that 3D printer is allowing people to make garments for themselves, will new machines and technologies allow consumers to make professional level garments for themselves as well? Um, yes and no. Uh, because of, of course, why not? Uh, it's possible for people who are very creative. Why not? But uh, not everybody is creative, and some people prefer to have somebody uh, who makes uh, uh, the clothes for them. It's like painting or photography. Not everybody is gifted for for, for these arts, and uh, fortunately, there will always be room for creative people who will uh, work with technicians uh, to create things that are going to be absolutely amazing. Think of, I don't know, dresses like uh, TVs, made with TV screens. Um, for this, you need a lot of technology, but as well, you need creativity. So maybe you will be able to do uh, things by yourself, little things, uh, not so important, but when it will become to uh, Big pieces, then you will have to, to, to go through uh, industry and creativity. Okay, great. Um, I think we could have time for one more question, maybe. What do you think, Donald? Are you ready for it? Yeah. Do you, do you see fashion houses employ technology experts in house for innovation and wearable tech? If so, how do you see this impact the conventional art of fashion design? Hmm. Well, I, would, I do not have a crystal ball, <laughs> and it's uh, it's difficult to answer this question. But uh, um, what we can see that it it already started. You know, as soon as there is new technology, you can see fashion houses uh, using it very very quickly. Uh, would it be a new way of printing? Would it be a new way of, uh, of uh, 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 using uh, all these new techniques? You know that these big groups are really investing a lot of money today in digital. Uh, LVMH, for instance, uh, uh, has taken uh, somebody very important at Apple 
who is now in charge of digital at LVMH, while uh, Apple took people from Saint Laurent or big fashion house and used them in uh, uh, in their new products, the new technologies. So uh, what we can see is that both fashion and high technology are now using the same kind of people. So I think that little by little, uh, it will become closer and closer. Okay. Well, thanks for that. I think the second poll results are up. 32% uh, of the people said that art direction and creative management are the skills that will be required in the future. Would you agree with that, Donald? Yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah. So, it's not much changing in that space in the future either. <laughs> all right, well, I think that's all we have time for. But thank right. you so much, Donald. It was great chatting with you. And if there's anyone watching who has any questions about studying abroad or about the courses at PCA, you can click on the link on the bottom left and you have more information about the courses available at PCA and also my email address in case you want to reach out to me with any questions you have regarding a career in the arts or even just studying abroad, you can contact me on that email address. Thank you. Um, great. Thanks a lot, Kamna. And thanks a lot, Donald. It was, it was amazing having you all here. And some really great insights. I mean, technology, presentation, and distribution. Uh, uh, really, really interesting stuff. Um, so, uh, to the viewers, as Kamna said, um, if you can just um, scroll down to the bottom left, you can go and click on the link by which will take you to um, a Paris College of Art page in case you're interested. Um, and uh, yeah, and we have another webinar coming up soon, so we'll keep you updated about that. Um, um, so goodbye to everyone. Thanks a lot for coming. Bye. Bye. Bye.